Life on the Red Horse Ranch. Arizona still regrets his attempt to ride Red, Alabama's beautiful roan horse. <laughs> Red showed his resentment by throwing Arizona over the corral fence. And today, Arizona's not in too good a humor. As we join them, we're afraid Tex Owens isn't helping Arizona's frame of mind very much. Here they are in the bunkhouse. Oh, that's so very wrong. Turn a Tex Horns lay off, will you? <laughs> I hear you kind of take the strawberry roans, Arizona, after the way that roan treated you. Yeah, especially roans named Red. Go on singing, Tex. Yeah, sure, after right. trying to ride Red, Arizona's too stiff and sore to get at you if he wanted to. Go ahead, Tex. Oh, that strawberry oh. roan. <laughs> hey, Arizona, watch out where you're throwing that boot, will you? The next hombre I hear mention any kind of a horse, I'm going to skin him alive with my jackknife. Ride right him, cowboy. Yeah, that goes for you too, Bob. Ooh, my leg. I'm so twisted up you could brand a calf with me. Well, there's some folks that can't learn any way but by experience, and I reckon you are one of them kind, Arizona. Well, I learned to stay away from that red, if that's what you mean. Well, red is a one-man horse. That's the way I trained him, and... I told you not to touch him, didn't I, Arizona? Come on, Alabama. Let's talk about Indians or stampedes. Something kind of soothing. <laughs> I guess they would be soothing compared to what Red did to you yesterday. Arizona will never try riding him again. And I advise none of the rest of you to, either. Hey, you can have him, Alabama. I reckon my pinto is good enough for me without carrying around a keg of gunpowder inside. <laughs> <laughs> but say, we was all set to hear Tex sing a tune. Go ahead, Tex, and... Arizona, you lay off. Sure. <laughs> I hear something for Ar Arizona likes turnip greens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I dreamed a dream the other night. I dreamed that I could fly. I flopped my wing like a buzzard and I flew up to the sky. At the gate I met St. Peter. He looked at me so neat. Asked me into dinner and this is what we eat. Oh, yeah, what turnip greens, turnip greens, good old turnip greens. Uh -huh. Cornbread and buttermilk and good old turnip green. St. Peter kindly asked me from what town did I fly. Told him from O'KC I flew up to the sky. He told me with his telescope I don't know what that means. There's a thousand people there who live on turnip green. Turnip green, turnip green, good old turnip green. Cornbread and buttermilk and good old turnip green. St. Peter said from KC yeah, I only one man He could hardly live there In that golden happy land Neither cared for honey Nor wished for milk or cream Hearts seemed to crave Them good old turnip green Turnip green, turnip green Good old turnip green Cornbread and buttermilk And good old turnip green St. Peter said this Casey man Had a heart as black as jet 
used to be an angel and could have been one yet. But his ways they got so crooked, he lived beyond his means. He was sent way below for stealing a dish of turnip green. Turnip green, turnip green, good old turnip green. Corn bread and buttermilk and good old turnip green. <laughs> And now let's hear the whole passel of you lay into one. Well, we gotta have Tenderfoot if it's a fiddling tune. Where is he, yeah. anyway? Same place he's been every evening for the last two weeks, mooning around up at the ranch house trying to get a look at Rose Carter. Yeah, we'll have to do without him right now. You know, I feel sort of sorry for that young fella. He's plumb loco over Rose. Somebody ought to tell him he ain't got a chance. Oh, forget it, Idaho. Arizona, grab what? your banjo. No, sir, I'm scared I'd come all apart if I even move my little finger. Oh. Back. I've got it. Arizona can play his French harp. That don't take much effort. <laughs> That's good enough. But all you fellas get your mouth harps and lead them off text something like Polly Wally Doodle all the day. Hey, yeah, Cheyenne, yeah. hold this French harp up to my mouth, will you? Sure. All right, let's go. Come on, let's go. Tenderfoot coming in now. Come on in if you can find your way over Texas feet. <laughs> You're giving up sort of early, ain't you, young fella? Hello, fellas. Uh, how you feeling, Arizona? Try touching me and you'll find out. <laughs> Say, Tenderfoot, yeah. you look like Rose that done throwed you out of the house. Who, uh, Rose? Oh, uh, I haven't seen her. Move over, Bob. <laughs> Man, that's a new way to call on a girl. Never even getting a look at her. Oh, lay off of him, Bob. Ain't you got a lick of sense? <laughs> oh, I don't mind Alabama. I was counting on seeing her, but... I saw Steve Bradford's horse tied out front, so I figured I wasn't wanted. Steve right. Bradford? Yeah. Is that slicker still shining up to Rose? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I don't see as there's anything wrong in that. Anyhow, he might have come up to see Dad Carter, for all I know. Sure, he, he might have. Yeah. Well, I'm just like Idaho. I never did like Bradford's looks. If Carter decides to sell out to Bradford, well... I'm counting on moving to another range. Well, we're all hoping Carter don't sell to Bradford or nobody else. But uh, forget it. Sing us another song or two before we hit these bunks. Well, I say? think Tenderfoot will like this one. Ready, boys? Yeah, we're yeah. Up. You may talk of the joys of the sweet honeymoon. I'll agree they are sweet while they last. But in most every case, they are over too soon and are counted as things of the past. For the troubles and trials are sure to begin Though you do just the best that you can And you want to be away from the clatter and din That falls to the poor married man Oh, the racket and the muss, the trouble and the fuss His face, it grows haggard and worn You can tell by his clothes wherever he goes That he is a poor married man he must run, he must walk, he must sing, he must talk, he must go for the water and pan. He must run, he must leap, and go without sleep, because he's a poor married man. He's a fool, he's a brute, and he never will suit, though he does just the best that he can. He would rather be dead, for then twould be said, he's at rest, the poor married man. All right. Uh, say, boys, you go right ahead. Right. I promised Mr. Carter I'd come up to the house and talk about some of the work before sure. I turned in. Sure. Let's all of us sing just one more. Yeah. You're in on this, too, Tenderfoot. Oh, what's it going to be this time, Bob? Cowboy's Dream. Cowboy's Ain't a dream. cowboy in the West that don't know that tune. Yeah, that's right, man. Last night as I lay on the prairie And looked at the stars in the sky 
Isn't it beautiful, Steve? Yes, it is, Rose. They're singing the cowboy's dream now, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Every night they sing the same way. Alabama and all the boys. Oh, I never get tired of it. <laughs> that big moon up there doesn't hurt things at all, either, does it? <laughs> no, Steve. Oh, it's, it's all so different back here. Everybody told me how I'd like back east when I went to school, how wonderful the big cities were. But you know, I wouldn't give this up for all the schools and cities in the world. You do love the open range, don't you? Yes, I do. All the time I was in school, why, I'd have given anything for a gallop on a real western pony. Say, that's a handsome horse I saw you riding this morning, Rose, that black one. Oh, yes, Blackie. She's my favorite. But Dad objects every time I ride Blackie. Why? Does he think Blackie's a little dangerous? Well, she's as gentle as any horse in the lot, but she's gun shy. She almost ran away with me once before when she heard a gun fired. Oh, gun shy, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, Rose. About this ranch, the Red Horse. I wish I could make you see it my way. Well, I... I do appreciate all you're trying to do for Dad, Steve. He does, too. Alabama was a little angry when he heard that you told me about the trouble. Alabama? Yes. Oh, yes, the foreman. Well, uh, I've made your dad a fair offer for the outfit. He's going to have to sell soon, and he'll lose it all anyhow. But, Rose, I've got to know. Well... I'm afraid I couldn't say much to Dad. He's kind of stubborn. But, Steve, I... I just can't imagine having to leave the Red Horse Ranch after all these years. Well, maybe you won't have to leave it, Rose. Uh, oh, excuse me, Miss Rose. I, oh, I it's you. Oh, Alabama, I didn't see you coming. You know Steve Bradford, don't you? Yes, uh, evening, Mr. Bradford. I suppose you let your ranch hands pry around the house just as they please, Rose. Oh, Steve. I'll have to beg your pardon, Rose. Uh, if that was meant for me... I think I... you know what I mean, Alabama. You didn't know I saw you snooping around over on my Bar D ranch yesterday. Why, Alabama, what does he mean? That's ridiculous, Rose. I did ride over that way. Some of our cattle strayed into your hills during the winter. There's none of your herd over there. It sounds to me like there must be a reason for someone wanting to spy on your outfit, Bradford. I don't like that. Steve, Alabama, please. I'm mighty sorry, Miss Rose. I'll talk to you later, Bradford. Roll on, roll on, roll on, little donkeys, roll on, roll on. Well, it looks as though Alabama and Steve Bradford aren't going to get along any too well. Bradford must have some strange motive for wanting to buy the Red Horse Ranch. What can it be? Ooh.